Imagine you are performing two experiments. In each of them you are capturing some data using a picoscope for the same type of engine. Then you would like to combine those captures so that you can compare them properly. In another situation you might be using two picoscopes simultaneously, perhaps running at different sampling rates, and then you get two picoscope files and you would like to merge them. Sometimes it is possible to utilize so-called reference waveforms where you would load one of the picoscope files and save its traces one by one into reference waveforms and then bring them back in into the other picoscope file. However, in general this doesn't work very well. Even if you are using two oscilloscopes simultaneously, the differences in internal clocks of the oscilloscopes is going to make the timings in the files different. So when you bring back in the reference waveform, it will be on a slightly different timing, noticeably different timing. And the situation is even worse if you are doing two experiments, because the engine speed is drifting and so it's likely to be different for the two experiments and all the timings are going to be mismatched. Note that even though you can move the reference waveform left and right, this is not going to achieve the goal because you will be able to match one part of the waveform but the other part of the waveform will drift away. So we need to have a much more powerful method to achieve the goal of merging picoscope files. And in this video I'm going to sketch an approach. I'm going to use files that are provided by South Main Auto. Uh, here you can see the files are in uh, Google Drive and so you can download them and play with them and here we are going to show how to merge the data contained in these files. Okay, let's begin by opening uh, one of the files and seeing what's inside. Uh, so what we have is bank 1 data and let's select two revolutions of the crankshaft and then set up the cursors. And we need to set up the cursors very precisely. So let's zoom in, way in, and line up the falling edge with the cursor. and we need to record the values very precisely. So 262.428 milliseconds for the left one. And then let's go back and do exactly the same thing for the cursor on the right. And I repeat, we need to be very precise, pretty much like one microsecond precision. So this would be 480.915. Let's write those down. We will need these values later. Now let's do exactly the same thing for the bank to data. Now let's repeat the process for bank to data. So I'm going to go and open bank 2 and uh, repeat the whole process. Uh, I'm going to again uh, select two revolutions of the engine and make sure that the cursors line up exactly with uh, the falling edges. And 
record those values up to one microsecond precision. done here. I uh, recorded those values and now what we are going to do, we are going to save all this data into MATLAB. So here you can select in the menu to save it as a MATLAB file. So once I'm done that for both bank 1 and bank 2, I'm going to bring them back in into Octave or MATLAB and uh, process them there. So let's head to Octave right now and uh, load the uh, saved files BK1 and BK2. Also recall the uh, timings that we identified using Picoscope cursors and after that I'm just plotting all the data on one screen. And let's see what happens. So, doesn't look bad at first. Uh, let's see how the CKP signals from both uh, files match, let's say, at the end of the files, and they match pretty well. And if we do it here, they kind of match, though not really. So, what really happened is that when we plotted them on the same graph uh, using those cursor timings we matched the average speed of the crankshafts even though in the original files they were different and this means that at the end of the intervals left and right we have the timings kind of matching however in the middle of the interval, bad things happen. We have the timings running away from each other, so the traces for one of the f for the first file and the second files are not um, matching anymore. So we actually haven't uh, achieved our goal, and so we cannot trust what uh, happens to the other traces that we are interested in. So we need to do a little bit more legwork to make the timings match. For that I'm going to record the times for the falling and rising edges for CKP traces for both files and then stretch out the timing for bank to data so that the edges for CKP match the edges for bank 1. So this edge has to be stretched to match this edge, this edge has to be stretched to match this edge, and so on. As a result, this will give me transformation of the timings that will make CKP traces match exactly and if I apply the same transformation to the other traces there that will make the timings correct and I have already uh, done this and I'll have that have that in figure one and what do we see let's zoom in on the CKP traces and we see that they all line up exactly everywhere and as a I apply the same timing transformation to the other traces, they are now comparable. And now you are going to say, well, we have those uh, traces now in Octave, but now we cannot really do much with them because we do not have the phase rulers or any cursors in Octave. So you cannot really process this data the same way we are used to 
do in PicoScope. So ideally what we need to do right now is to take this transformed data and stuff it back in into PicoScope. This would require reverse engineering the PicoScope data file format and even though I know how to do that I'm pretty sure that PicoScope team would be really upset if people would start coming up with uh, PicoScope files that are created from arbitrary data. So I'm not going to go that way but uh, I'll try to do it in a maybe not as convenient but still workable way. Uh, the thing is that we still have the reference waveforms that we can bring in into PicoScope files. And if you look at what uh, the reference waveform files are, they are really nothing but the floating point array of data that is uh, compressed by a well-known uh, compression algorithm and then there is a text file attached that lists the voltage ranges, the time scale and the color and the units for the trace very simple format and uh, what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to take this data that I have in Octave save it as a floating point data compress it add the text file that describes the timings and uh, voltage ranges and load that back in into the first PicoScope file for bank 1. And I'm not going to go through the details of how I do that, but I'm going to show you the final product. So let's see where I have that. Um, where do I have that? Nope, I cannot find it anymore. Oh, here we go. This is what I'm going to get. So it's uh, just the original bank one data where I added the reference waveforms for transformed CKP and CMP signals. And now what we have is, let's zoom in. We have the CKP signals matching perfectly. And we have CMP signals, whatever they turned out to be. And now we can do the measurements and see what's uh, really going on. Uh, We have our phase rulers, 0 to 720 degrees of rotation. Uh, we have the cursors going. Everything that you need, you can do now to have all those traces on one screen. So we have successfully merged data from two picoscope files even though they were collected at different times and at slightly different RPMs. Of course, this is just a demonstration, but it wouldn't be too hard to make a program or an online system that would allow you to upload two picoscope files marked up with timing cursors and receive back reference waveforms that you can add to the first picoscope file and see all the data on one screen. However, there need to be two things for this to happen. Firstly, the PicoScope team should have no objections against converting uh, PicoScope data 
into transformed reference waveforms like it is described in the video. And secondly, there should be enough interest in such transformations. So if you think that this technology would be useful to you, or you can think about other ways to utilize this technology, please mention that in the comment box below.